we are ending a series that we've been in for this is the fifth week. It's called We Are That Church. And, um, and so we've been talking about the four values or, or, or the four statements, really, of Radiate Church. We talked about know God. We talked about gather together. We talked about chasing purpose. And we talked about changing the world. And so we've talked about those the past four weeks, and I wanted to do something that I honestly, I don't think I've really done it in this capacity ever in the seven and a half years of the existence of this church. And I wanted to take a Sunday, and I wanted to talk about vision. I wanted to talk about where we're going, who we are, because I know that over the past year, but also over the past seven years, that there's brand new faces in the room. There's brand new faces that'll be in the next service. There's brand new faces that are still camping out at their mom and dad's eating leftover turkey today. There, there's all these things that are taking place, and I wanted you to know who we are and what we're committed to be as a church and what God has spoken to us and what we're going to do. And if you want to turn in your Bibles, we're really going to hit just one, really two verses today, two verses in Isaiah chapter 43. And we'll get there in a few minutes, but I just want to give you some time to get there and turn it on. And, and somebody asked me, is it in the Bible app today? It's not in the Bible app today. The notes are not in your Bible app. And here's why. Because when you're doing a message like this, it's really hard to just put notes down somewhere. As much as it is, we just need to take notes from heart. You know what I'm saying? And so today, I'm going to be real honest. I come with notes, but I'm going to pour out my heart today on who we're going to be as a church and, who, and what we're going to do. Because I just am always um, captivated by this thought. And, and I want to give you the thought that I think on all the time. And I, I, I hope it captivates you and embraces and envelops your heart and your passion like it does mine. And it's this. What if we didn't just gather as a church, but we were a part of a church that changed the world? And, and I ask myself that question all the time because here's why. I love gathering with people and I think gathering is important. We talked about that in week two. And if you missed that message, go, go back and listen to it on our app. Or, I mean, on our website or, or any of that stuff, our app's coming in, in a few weeks. But and, and the thing is, is like this, like, what if we didn't just gather? What, what if we did things that actually made a difference in the world that we call home? Are you with me? Because I think we have enough churches that just come together and sing two or three, four songs and take up the offering and hear a good inspirational message and then go home and nothing really changes. What, what if we were a part of a church that God was so moving in that the addictions don't define me, but I tell them where to go? Instead of addictions telling me how I'm going to act, I tell them to go to hell. Anybody? Y'all, come on now. Like, what if we were a part of a church that changed everywhere that we stepped foot? What if we were a part of a church... And by church, I don't mean a building, because forget the building. The building facilitates the move of God. It is not the move of God. Like, what if we were a part of a church, a, a group of people that believe like Joshua did, whenever Joshua believed what God said, when he said, everywhere you step your foot is ground that I'm giving you. What if we were those people? What if we were people that really believed God enough that when we read and we hear how good God is, we take it back home? Are you with me today? I don't know about you, but I'm not, I have no interest in being part of another organization. I, I pay $10 a month to be a part of a Gamecock organization to find out all the news before 30 seconds before anybody else does. Right? I know it's embarrassing, but it's an addiction and y'all pray for me. No, I'm just kidding. But like, I have no interest in being part of another organization. I have no interest. And just getting together just to get together and complain and talk about things I don't like. I have every interest in being a part of a group of people that believe God enough to go out and actually do something about it. Anybody? I, I, I have interest in being a part of a group of people that gather that go, I believe God is so big he can do actually what he said he would do. I don't go home and hope that he fo follows through on the promise. I don't go home and hope that Jesus died on the cross. I don't go home and hope that, that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. I go home and know that everywhere the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom in my life. And if I'm carrying the Spirit of the Lord, I should walk in victory, not in a victim mentality. You with me? And so, 
I just like that's the thought that captivates my mind and my heart every single day. And I, I know there's some people that don't know the full story of this church, and I'm gonna try to tell you that in about three minutes. But I'm not gonna go back all the way to the beginning to where I felt like I was called to start a church. But I want to tell you the church you sit in today. I know, I know some people, let's let's talk about your friends and family that are like, I can't go to church in a school. What the thing is, is that's because church is a building to us in the wrong mentality. Church is not a building. Church is active. Church is motion. Church is people that believe what God said he was going to do. He is going to do. This is a building and a facility and buildings come and buildings go and buildings need maintenance and buildings need repair and all that stuff. It doesn't matter about the building. What matters is what's in the building. The church you sit in today, the chairs you sit in today, the The drapes you see hanging are all paid for, not just in money, but through blood, sweat, and tears seven and a half years ago when there was 30 people that showed up at Killian Elementary School about 10 minutes down the road and didn't know what we were doing. Y'all, y'all, every single Sunday, I was load in team, I was load out team, I was sound man, I was media team, I was pastor, my wife was kids pastor slash worship pastor, like, it was crazy when you were there. Like, I went... Y'all, y'all, see, y'all see these cool LED lights and, and movers, right? You know what we have for LED lights in? I was talking to Pastor Chris about this the other day. We were laughing about it. You know what LED lights were? Y'all ever seen those, those floodlights that you get at Lowe's that's on the side of your house? And y- y- I'm, <laughs> I'm being dead serious. Y'all laughing ahead of time. Like, here's what it was. I went and bought those. I went and bought two single ones and two double ones, right? And I took them apart and I wired, I cut the end of extension cords off. I ain't an electrician. We got electricians in the room. I'm looking at one right now, a great one. And he's probably like, dude, don't ever do that again. I cut the end off, shaved back the wires, and wired that to an extension cord. Went and bought colored floodlights. Now, they only come in three colors, red, blue, and green. Oh, four, and yellow. I forgot about that. That's the insect color light. So we didn't have any insects in our church. And dude, we went and I hooked those things up and I drilled them to a two by four and I connected them there and I drilled a hole where the the wires came through. We laid it on the ground. I plug it in. I put in those colored lights in there. And then I went and built these circular plastic. I don't even know what they were called, man. They were ugly and they would cut you. We got some people in the room that probably remember these things and they were up there and they were nasty and I took them and I'd slide them over the single floodlights. And so it looked like we had these nice lights back there, but I was in my garage trying to figure out how to make a $300 system for about three bucks. And it worked for, for our season. You know what I'm saying? I remember I went and built risers for the, for the, um, for the, the bass was right here, for the bass and for the guitarist, man. And they come up off the ground about that high and I built risers and I was like, it'd look cool to have chrome around them. So I went and got aluminum. Aluminum flashing and put around the sides, right? And y'all, I'll never forget, I was helping move those things one Sunday, and the corner of it came up, and it gashed my hand so bad, I preached with a paper towel in my hand for half the message <laughs> to keep it from... But that was just where, what, how it started. I'd run sound and then run up and preach. We had bumper videos. We had announcement videos, but they weren't this cool. Here's what it was. It was PowerPoint... <laughs> Motion graphics with a, with a video, voice in the background. And the only reason we did bumper videos or those kind of announcement videos is because I had to have time to get from the soundboard to the stage to preach. And my wife had to have time to get from the stage to the kids area from leading worship. Right? But there were so many people, they'd show up early and they'd get there. I'll never forget this story either. Maybe I will tell you all the stories. I don't know. I'll never forget this story too either. We show up. We're meeting in an elementary school. We show up. We didn't have a key. The only people that had a key was a lady named Miss Maddie. She was so sweet. She was amazing. She overslept one day. We had service at 1030. It was 930 and nobody had opened the door yet. And everybody looked at me and they were like, what are we going to do, Pastor? I was like, I don't know. I ain't been in this a year yet. No, I looked at him. I said, hey, if we got to, I'll stand on the bed of my truck and preach while everybody's sitting in the, in the parking lot if we got to. But we're going to have church at this point. She shows up. We set everything up. I don't know how in the world we did it in record time. Got there. Had church. No, there's a lot of people that had no idea what had happened that day. But the truth is, is where we sit today as a church is paid for by somebody. 
Where we sit for today as a church is, is paid for by somebody. And then we go from the elementary school, we go and lease a building down on Two Notch. Anybody remember our Northeast campus for a while? We were running three services, doing well, about to go to a fourth. We launched the Elgin campus out of that. God took us from about 85 people to about 250 to 300. That place was small, but it was good and it helped us and God moved in that way. I'll never forget, um, I used to, we put in an alarm system in there and man, we had hanging uh, uh, signs and every time the light or the air conditioner would kick on at about 1 a.m., 2 a.m., that thing would move and it set off the alarm. It got to the point where I just started ignoring the phone calls from, from the alarm company. We got a letter one time. We got so many calls, we got a letter one time from the cops. They're like, if we show up one more time and there ain't nothing, y'all gonna start paying us. Like, yes, sir. That week, I went and moved the sign so that it didn't do that anymore. We showed up one Sunday or I think it was a Sunday. We showed up one Sunday, and it, it like the it was flood. No, it was a, a Sunday night or Monday, but it was flooded in the in the auditorium because it had rained so much. It built up and rolled in through some I don't even know where. We still don't know where in the building. It flooded the whole place. Like that was crazy. And then we had fans in there, and and I was just praying to God. Hey, I, that week my prayer was not let people come. My prayer was don't let it smell like mildew when people walk in here today, like because it stank whenever that happens. But God moved, and God did great things. We saw amazing things take place. And then we moved over here to Elgin, and, and, and we've seen our share of things. When we started in Elgin, we didn't have metal pipe and drape. We had PVC pipe put together that was, and if you look, like, you look at the tops, you would look at the tops where the, the metal pipe and drape is now, and it's straight. Then it would be like this. It looked like a wave in an ocean. But it's what we had, and it's what we did, and, 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 and everything has evolved. And, and I tell you all that to tell you this, like, we've come a long way as a church, but it's all paid for by somebody. And when I say paid for, please don't think money, because we're, we, we don't have the money to just go out. I know people that have started their church with $200,000 in the bank, and they launched their church with that, and then they get mad that one of their LED lights go out. And I'm like, go to Lowe's and buy a floodlight and drill it to a two-by-four. You know, and, and like the truth is, is we've made do with what we have because we believe God's going to do something great. Because we live by this motto, we do what only we can do, so he can do what only he can do. And I know sometimes we forget that kind of stuff, but it's still true that we work our tails off. We make things happen because we didn't set out just to build a church. We didn't set out just to have a group of people that gather on Sundays. We set out to change lives to change communities, to change counties, to change families, to change generations, to change socioeconomic statuses. We set out to change lives and see something unlocked in people. What would happen if we stopped worrying about everything else that we can't control and we really celebrated what we can? I, I, I heard an interview by, of a football coach yesterday. Their team was like two and nine going into the, it wasn't Carolina, quit making your jokes. Their team was like two and nine coming in, and they won a, a game yesterday against their rival. And, and, and somebody asked them about what, what changes are you going to make in the offseason? What's going to happen? And he goes, listen, we just won a game, and it's been a bad season. I'm going to take some time and celebrate this first. And I love that mentality because here's the truth. What if we started celebrating and believing what we know God can do in the house? Here's what he was telling his players. I know it's been a bad season. I know it's been tough, but I also know there's greater days ahead. And if we'll celebrate this, we can get in a mindset to where we can enjoy what's coming. You with me in the room? Because if we're not careful, we'll get caught up on things that really don't matter. The one constant through all the changes, through all the growth, through all the different facilities, through all the different struggles. Man, we've seen people come, we've seen people go, we've seen people born, we've seen people die. We've seen all these things happen in this, like we've seen the good, we've seen the bad. And we're not done seeing the good nor the bad. But here's the truth, there's one constant in this entire thing and it's God's promise. Because when God promises something, he never goes back on the promise. He never pulls back on the promise. When God promised you that you could live a life that, to be the person that he promised you you could be, guess what? He didn't look at you one day when you messed up and said, oh, never mind. He did look at you and go, oh, we can work through that. Let's go if you'll just listen. God's promises never go backwards. God's promises only go forward. 
It's just up to us. What are we going to do with it? When, when God said you can have the marriage you've always dreamed for, and I, I do believe God says that. Do you know what, what God is saying? It, it means that you need to do what you need to do so that I can do what I can do. We need to stop trying to do what only God can do. Listen to me. Galatians tells us, do not grow weary in doing good, for in due season you'll reap a harvest. Guess whose, fault, whose, whose responsibility it is to bring the harvest? It ain't mine. My job is to sow the seed. My job is not to get tired. My job is to wake up every single day and do everything I can to sow as much seed for the kingdom of God as possible. His job is to look at the seed and go, it's time to harvest. Quit trying to do what God does. You do what you do. You do what God's called you to do. Is this helping anybody real quick today? And so I just want to talk about who are we? Who are we? I believe we're called to be a church that's a beacon of hope. I, in fact, let me, let me give it to you like this out of Scripture. This is the way God gave it to me. Actually, he reaffirmed some things to me in Scripture a couple years ago. In Isaiah chapter 43, verses 19 through 20, there's a, uh, the prophet Isaiah and is actually talking to the nation of Israel here about being restored and, and what's going to happen. And I love these verses, and God really brought this out in me, and I think about this all the time. Verse 19 says, Behold, I will do something new. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even make a roadway in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Verse 20. The beasts of the field will glorify me. The jackals and the ostriches because I have given waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to drink to my chosen people. I read that a few years ago and there's a few things that stuck out to me in that. It, it talks about something new. Something new. He, again, uh, God is talking to the nation of Israel through the prophet Isaiah right here. And, he, and he's telling them, hey, I need to do something new. In other words, I need to, to not do the same things that's always been done. Hey, can, listen to me today. If you want to see something different, you have to be willing to do something different. Many of us pray for God to do a new thing, but we don't want to let go of any of the old things. Yeah. Hey, God, I wish you'd do something new in my life, but I'm going to hold on to old mindsets. Hey, God, I wish you'd bring a new passion in my life, but I'm going to hold on to old bitterness. Hey, God, I wish you'd do something new in my church, but I'm going to hold on to the way that I've always known church. Come on, somebody. The truth of the matter is, is God says, I'm going to do something new. I want to do something new, not something old. I don't want to rehash the same old thing. I want to do something new. It may look, it may come in the casing of something. It may have the core of something that has been done, but it will be a new thing. And God says it'll spring up. I don't know if you know this, but a spring like comes out of nowhere. And my family land, we have land where we hunt and fish. And we got land where one day I'll build a house and, and all these things, right, in, in, in this family land. But there's a natural spring on my family land. And, and, and I, as a kid, I used to ask my dad, Dad, take me to the spring, show me the spring. And he'd take me down there. We'd walk through the woods. It's not far from my parents' house. We'd walk through the woods, basically through the backyard, through the woods, go back there, and we'd see the spring. And it, it's there, and you can see the water bubbling up, and you can see all these things. It's a really cool thing. But here's the thing. You never would have thought the spring would be coming from there. He says it'll spring up. In other words, it's going to come out of nowhere when nobody expects it. And where nobody... And he says, will you... Hear him in verse 19... Will you be aware of it? Isn't that amazing that God is speaking to Israel and saying, will you not be aware of it? In other words, he's going, if you're not careful, you will miss it. If you're not in tune, you will miss the new thing. If you're not in tune, here's the thing. I think some of us are walking by every day new miracles from God and we're missing it because it's coming out of nowhere. We're too busy complaining about the mundane instead of celebrating the miracle. We're too busy worrying about what everybody else is doing to celebrate what God is doing in the places that we never thought that he would show up. Some of us are, are praying and asking God for a financial breakthrough instead of celebrating him for allowing us to pay our bills this month. Some of us are complaining about our spouse and who they've turned into instead of celebrating the fact that God answered our prayer when we asked for one to begin with. Anybody in the room? And so the truth is, is like we got to get to this thing to where we want a new thing, but we'll let go of an old thing. But we'll always be looking for where it springs up. And, and here's what I heard the Lord tell me about Radiate Church. Radiate Church is called to be the way in the wilderness. 
Think about this for a second. Away in the wilderness. What does that mean? It means that it's an uninhabited area. It's an uninhabited area. It's grown up. Things are happening. You know, like, think of a, a, a forest almost with, with, with thick brush and, and, and vines and all this stuff all over the place. And here's what that scripture is saying. Here's what God's saying to the nation of Israel. And here's what I believe God's saying to radiate today is this, that I'm going to allow you to be the people that take a machete into a wilderness that's so growing up, nobody else will walk in there. And you'll start cutting a path in the wilderness to show people there is a way out of your wilderness. There is a way out of your struggle. There is a way out and it's called the kingdom of God. I believe that's what God's called us to do is to go in and be way cutters, path cutters. I also believe God has called us to be a riverbed in the desert. Think about it this way. In your mind, picture a desert for me for a moment. It's, it's, dark, it's, it's brown and sandy and dry, right? And it's, it's not a lot of movement and it's not a lot of action. And then picture this river running right through the middle of it. And here's what happens. If you ever watched National Geographic, you've actually probably seen drone footage of something like this. And I love National Geographic and I love watching those kind of things. But I, I've always been fascinated that, that they know, here's the thing, predators know, Oh man, this is a word right here. Predators know where everybody's going because they're going to the one place where there's water. And so enemies show up to get their prey because they know where the water's at because there's only one water source and it's the one river that runs right through the desert. Hear me today. I believe God has called Radiate Church to be the riverbed that runs the water, the living water of Jesus Christ right through a place called the desert. So are you calling my town a desert and, and a dry, just desolate place? No, no, no. What I'm doing is I'm declaring that we will be the place that everyone is attracted to because we're the water source. We're the riverbed. I'm not saying anything about any other church because I believe any church can be that. But I know that God has told me, Brandon, Radiate Church is to be the one place, is to be the riverbed that, that, that moves and turns with the Spirit of God as the water flows through the riverbed. The water of the living God, the living water of Jesus Christ flows through this in every county every every town every place that we will ever go to because Kershaw County is not the only place and will not only be the only place but uh, every place we ever go to we will bring the living water of Jesus Christ everywhere we go we will cut away for people to know how they can get into the kingdom of God and know the kingdom of God better we will be that place we may not always be perfect but we will be the riverbed we may not always be perfect, but we will always cut a path. We'll find a way to make it happen. And here's the thing. You heard me say this last week, and I want to give you this thought because I want it to get in your head. We, as a church, we will not stop until Jesus runs this county. We will not stop until Jesus gets back in this place. We will not stop until this county is run by Jesus Christ. We're not going to stop. I, I know some of you are like, I don't know how to react to this because this isn't just like your typical message. No, no, no. We ought to be excited that we get to be a part of something that's going to change the world. Because I think God wants people that are excited about what's going to happen, not just thankful for what has. Because when we're only thankful for what has happened, we get into religion and we get into rules and regulations. And then we just live in the past rather than uh, 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 pushing forward for the future. And so we, we had an amazing year, guys. You can leave that right up on the screen just the whole time. We had an amazing year in 2019. We're, we're on track for, for a, at least 100 salvations and at least 50 baptisms this year in 2019 alone. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Let's celebrate what God's doing in the house. 100 salvations? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? We got some amazing things that are happening here. There's currently... Over 200 people involved in life groups each and every week right through here through Radiate Church doing life together. And 160 people, at least 160 people are involved in teams that serve this church and do what, God need, do what they need to do so God can do what he needs to do. And here's the thing. Like, that ain't even... That ain't even where we need to be. We need way more than that. And here's why. It's not because we need it. It's because there's something in you that unlocks whenever we get around God's people. That's right. That's right. I know. I'm getting five amens today. Y'all don't know what's going on. Are you with me? Yeah, this past year, we sacrificially 
We saw people give sacrificially and generously, and we purchased 18 acres of land on Whiting Way, right on the interstate, undeveloped, ready to be built. You're going to hear a lot more about that in the coming year, but I want to, I, we need to celebrate that. We need to celebrate that because what's going to happen is we're going to build a home that ministry happens out of. In fact, because of that, not only did we do that, but we decided as a church that we were going to do, I, I talked to my, our coaches and our leaders just the other day about operating at higher levels. And, and we decided, I decided as the leader of this church that we're going to do something that creates capacity for us to rise to another level. And because of that, we hired a financial consultant in this, in this church, a third party that oversees all spending, all budget. I can't, if I spend a dollar out of place, I get a call from a guy that used to work for NASA. Think about that for a second. Like, okay, you know why I did that? Because I don't want to live at 500 people the rest of my life. I'm ready to get to thousands and see thousands of people's purpose unlocked. I'm ready to see something happen in this room. I don't just sit in an office and make up a budget for 2020. I have to go through checks and balances of overseers and financial consultants and things like that, right? We hired a financial consultant to teach us what can happen. One of the guys worked for NASA. The other guy built a $64 million, 7,400-seat sanctuary for his church. Tell me we're not getting connected, if you remember the message a few weeks ago, to bulldozers around here. I'm tired of just being around Tonkin trucks. It's time to be a part of a bulldozer and watch God build something big. Anybody with me in the room today? We grew in attendance by 11% this year. You know, the national average is 5%. Come on, you better make some noise in the room. What's celebrated is repeated. 11%. But I believe, I'm just going to be crazy enough to say, let's set a goal for 2020. Are you with me? Let's, let's grow by 100% next year. That's right. Oh, y'all got quiet on that one. Y'all got quiet. I was talking about setting a goal. Yeah, let's yeah, set a goal. Oh, not a goal that big. <laughs> no, here's the thing. We average right now, our average, some hot, sometimes higher, sometimes lower, our average is 476 people every single week right here at Radiate Church. If, if every single person brought three people throughout the next 12 months and one of them stuck, Guess what happens? You're at over 900 people a week sitting in the room hearing about Jesus. I know y'all are like, 100%, that's crazy. No, it's not. It's crazy not to believe God can do that. Come on, let's, let's, let's have to. Y'all are like, that means more services. Good, let's go. That's Jesus. That means more seats. Okay, that means more seats. Let's go. I don't care about the setbacks. I care about what we got to do. I'll preach six services if I got to. We'll do what we have to do to make it happen. Every <laughs> and here's why that matters, because every number is a person. Every person has a soul, and every soul goes somewhere. That matters, guys. It matters. And did you know that you helped launch over 40 new churches in 2019 throughout the United States this year? Over 40 new churches. And you help spread the kingdom and the gospel overseas in Israel and some other places as well. Guys, that's amazing. That's what happened in 2019. But I want to tell you what's going to happen beyond that. I want to tell you what's going to happen in 2020 and beyond. So if you'll give me a few more minutes today. I know what time it is. I know what's going on. Just give me just a few more minutes because I really need to get this out. I need you to get online with me because this year we're going to see and our prayer is that God begins a move of God with us. Then a move of God starts with us. It starts in our homes. It starts in our prayer time. It starts in our personal lives. It starts at this church, Radiate Church, every single week, every single day. And we're going to begin to believe big. One of our values is we go big or go home. So we're going to go big. We will always go big for connection. We will always go big for connection. We will always go big for groups and for teams. We have goals set out to where we need to reach certain things for goals and uh, uh, teams and groups. But here's the thing. Every single time the church transitions, that goal stays the same. This is where we're trying to get. This is what we're trying to do. And here's why. Here's why. Hear me. It's not for us. I need you to hear my heart on this. Groups and teams is not, has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with you. 
I hear people all the time that don't know how to get through issues in their life because they have nobody to talk to. I hear people say things like this sometimes. I'm just not connected with people in the church. And some of that I hurt. And I hurt because of this. Because it's, it's, you're not going to get connected by meeting for an hour while sitting in a seat for an hour on Sundays. you got to get into a group and get to know somebody and get into their life and let them into yours and start to grow together. Groups equals change. Teams is where it's at, too. Teams is where change happens. Teams is where things take place. Teams is where we don't do life alone. Groups and teams are highly important for connection. Man, I, I, I walk in on Sunday mornings, I hear teams laughing and, and joking and having a good time all the time while they're setting up Pipe and Drake, while they're setting up a kid's area, while they're setting up Radiate Youth, while they're in here putting tags on chairs, while they're practicing worship. Do you know why? Because teams become family. Teams become family. And dude, I can go to somebody on my team and be like, you know what, I love you more than you know, but I need somebody right now. I need a hug, I need an ear, I need something in my life. And we come together and we work. And here's the truth about connection. We will not be outloved in our, in our craft. We will not be a church that is ever outloved by anybody else. Chick-fil-A will not outlove us. Disney will not outlove us. Nobody will outlove this church because we love God and we love people. And if we can't get behind that, then this may not be the church for you. Anybody in the room? We'll go big for, for, for connection, man. And, and we'll empty our lives into others. And we will put our work where our hope is. I will not stand back and say, I hope this church does this and not do anything about it. I will put my invites where my, my hope is. I will put my hands where my hope is. I will put my heart where my hope is. Because connection is where it's at. That's where life changes today. We'll always go big for impact, man. I, I, I'm not going to be a church that just meets on Sundays and we just wait for the next Sunday. I'm excited for the next Sunday each and every week because I love our church. I love the experience. I love what God is doing here. I love the people. I love the worship. I love the hanging out. I love the fun things we do. I love the unfun things we do. I love it all. Like It's fun for me. But if we're just looking for the next Sunday to make an impact, then we're missing the point. Church is not Sunday to Sunday. Church is Sunday to Sunday while working during the week. The church is what we do outside the walls. If I have a faith, I'm going to go back to something I said about a year or two ago. If I have faith that only activates on Sundays, I don't have faith, I have a hobby. Faith in God, impact happens throughout the week. We will, nobody will be able to say that they work harder to make an impact than us. People may be able to say they don't like how we're making an impact, and that's fine. But nobody will be able to say that they've worked harder to make an impact. They will not be able to say they've stewarded as well. We may not always get it right, but we will work harder and then we have to work to make the biggest impact possible because this is our county and we will not wait for somebody else to do what we've been called to do. Amen? It's not going to happen on my watch. It's not going to happen on our watch. We'll do outreach. We'll be defined by generosity. We'll be defined by financial generosity, by time generosity, by energy generosity, by whatever it takes. We will be generous in our time here because God's going to do something amazing. I can't just wait. I got to do. We'll, we'll get involved in outreach. We'll do things in outreach. So, so we do things here through United Way. We do things, things through, out, uh, through food banks, through the town of Elgin, through the Kershaw County. We do things nationally, not just locally, but nationally through church planning networks, through the Acts 2 church planning and leadership network. And we do things internationally through uh, a ministry in Israel. That part is going to change and grow as we grow. But right now, we, we, we support FIRM, the Fellowship of Israel-Related Ministries. We, we make an impact by giving in invites and you matter cards. We will, we will make an impact through Radiate Worship. Radiate Worship feels called to write songs and be a part of bringing the, how, the sound of the house out to everyone else because we believe God's doing something special at this church and God's given us a voice and other people need to be freed by that. We'll make, a, we'll make an impact through uh, uh, future generations, through our Radiate Kids and our Radiate Youth. We'll do all those things. We'll do what we have to do in order to reach everybody because every single person matters. Do you know why we ask you to check your kids in at Radiate Kids? It's not so that anything happens in here. It's because they don't need to hear the gospel in your language. They need to hear it in theirs. They need to hear it in theirs or else they're going to walk away not even understanding what's happening. 
That's why we do Radiate Kids. You know why we have Radiate Youth? It's not because every church has a youth ministry. We have Radiate Youth because they need to learn about Jesus in their language. And they need to know what's going on in their world. And they need somebody to sit down across the table and go, this is how you deal with what's going on in your life. Because it all matters. And it all works together. So we'll go big for impact and we'll go big for miracles. And this is where I want to end today. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says that... that um, that he wants to do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond all that we could think or imagine. All that we could think or imagine. Here's the thing. Think of the wildest thing that you could think of in your life and what God wants to do in your life and through this church. Just for, take about 10, 15 seconds. Just think, what's the biggest thing? Like, think bigger than you've ever thought before. What can God do through you? What can God do through this church? What can God do? What would it look like for a move of God? Like, think big, man. Don't think uh, we build a building. No, think bigger than that. And here's, here's the beautiful thing. Like, I want you to think on that. And I want you to pray on that throughout the day. And here's the truth. The bigger you think, God wants to do more than that. What's the biggest, how, like, what is the biggest dream you can think of of what your family could be with God? God wants to do more than that. It says he wants to do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond all that I could think or imagine. So the bigger I think and the bigger I imagine, the more God wants to do. Maybe we're hindering miracles in our life, not because God's not bringing them, but because we can't even think about them. All I can think about is I need to get through the next paycheck. And God's going, I want to do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond all of that. I, I, I need you to hear me today. Like, I'm reaching big, and I'm going big for miracles in 2020 and beyond. Do you know, if somebody pinned us a $1 million check right now, I'd be able to call, a, call, a, uh, call engineers and get something started on that property tomorrow. Y'all are like, you asking me for a million dollars? Depends on if you got it or not. <laughs> no, here's what I'm telling you. You're going to hear way more about the building in 2020. I'm not here to talk about the building. But who says that we can't get enough money in 2020 to build a building and pay it off and see God do something miraculous? You know what I felt God tell me? That in 20, uh, through this church, that God's going to do something that is going to change the landscape of the area in this place. And everybody's going to look to radiate to find out what God's doing in the world. About five people got excited. What, what, who says we can't see blind eyes open? Who says we can't see financial miracles? Who says we can't raise over a million dollars for a building? Who says it won't work in a school? Who says we can't double in one year? Man, forget that stuff. My God says he wants to do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond anything I could think or imagine. If I want to see 100%, he wants to see 200%. If I need a million, he wants to bring three. Exceedingly, abundantly, beyond all I could think or imagine. We're going to go big. We're going to go big for miracles we're going to see God change lives we're going to see God build a building we're going to see God double our attendance it may not happen in year one it may happen in year two but we're going to see it happen we're going to see tremendous growth next year spiritually attendance, financial, every way around the world why? because we can believe it and we will see a victory I don't know about you, but I get pumped up talking about vision, man. We're not just here to just build a building. Man, forget that. If all we do is build a building and then we stop making an impact, I'll walk away today. Because forget that. I'm not here for that. I can go work for a major corporation and learn how to build buildings. I'm here to watch destinies be unlocked and financial situations be unlocked. I'm here to watch generations change and generational curses go. I'm here to see lives change. Man, forget this other stuff of getting caught up on the petty things about this and about that. I'm here for eternal difference. I'm here not for, for physical comfort. I'm here for eternal difference in people's lives. That's what this church will do. And that's what we will see at Radiate Church. Different. The truth is, I don't want to do it without you. I need people that'll come and lock arms 
that'll go, I'm not a part of a team, but I need to be. I'm not in a group, but I need to be. I need people that'll go, I will bust my tail and do what I need to do so that he can do what he needs to do because I'm going to see something take place in this world that is miraculous because to see the miraculous, I have to be willing to do the ridiculous. And I'll do it, man. I worked four jobs to start this, drained my savings account, and put everything on the line for this church seven and a half, eight years ago, and I'm not stopping now because the promise is still the same. And I just need some people that go, I'm with you, Pastor. I'm with you, Pastor. We're going to see this thing happen. And here's how I want to do the giving for a moment. If our ushers would go ahead and get ready. He'll get the baskets and come forward. I'm throwing them a, a curveball. That's what I do. And y'all just grab the baskets and come on down this way. All my ushers. But here's what I want to do. Some of you are in the room and, and you needed, and God's just been tweaking and going, I've been telling you to give and here's why. Because it, it's big vision. Some of, you, some of you, your next step is, is not just signing up for full life or being a part of a team or a group, which you need to go do that if you're not... Some of your next step is to go, I believe in this enough that I'm going to sacrificially give something. I'm going to start tithing. I'm going to give sacrificial. I don't know. This was not a money message. This is just me talking from my heart right now in a moment where we've changed things around right before service. Like, this is me just going, some of us needed to know what we're giving to, and what you're giving to is not what you see. What you're giving to is what God is going to do. And I just want to give you that moment right now. I'm about to pray. Because some of you are going to get, if you give your tithe, nothing changes. Still do it the same way. Put it in the basket. Give electronically. None of that changes. But some of you needed to know, this is why I need you to invest. This is why your next step has been on your heart to give and invest in this church. It's because of what God's doing here. And I just want to pray over that. And I want to tell, I'm going to pray over that. I'm going to tell you a couple things. Then we're going to pray together. We're going to walk out of here and change the world. Are you with me today? Let's pray. Father, thank you for who you are. God, I pray for every person that's about to give. God, I believe there's a few people in here that are going to give for the first time. Whether it's a dollar or a hundred dollars, it doesn't matter. They're going to give something because you are, you are impressing on their heart to be generous in this moment, invest in this moment because of what, God, you're doing here. And God, I pray blessing over them. Lord, for every person that gives their first 10% their tithe today, I pray the principle of Malachi chapter 3, the promise of Malachi chapter 3, that you protect what they have, provide what they need, and open up the windows of heaven and pour a blessing they can't contain. God, for every person that sacrificially gives above and beyond that, I pray right now a blessing over that, not just in their lives, but over this church, that we were steward it to achieve your vision for this church. God, we honor you in your name. Amen. As I continue talking, they're going to pass the baskets down, and if you give physically today, you can place it in that basket. That's fine. Some of you are going to go online. Some of you are going to give through the, the, the text, whatever it is. But I want to tell you a couple things, guys. Here at Radiate, I wanted you to hear where we're going. This is a little different of a Sunday, a little different of a message. But I want you to walk out of here jacked up because what you see is not all there is. Because what God's doing is only beginning and isn't ending. Amen? I want you to walk out of here and I want you to go, we're going to do this thing. We're going to see something happen. Hey, I, I'd love to get to June and be like, hey guys, we've already met, met our 100% growth goal. Let's do something. Hey guys, we're already over last year's salvations number. Hey guys, we're already over last year's baptism numbers. Like I'd love to get there and just say, God, we got to, we're believing you for bigger things. Set us up and help us grow. Amen? Amen. In just a few weeks. Christmas in Elgin is on the way. We got three experiences for you. 8, 30, 10, 11, 30. Pastor Travis talked about it on the screen. You got invite cards on your seats. I know they only laid one there. Hey, let's have bigger faith. Go grab about 10 of those things, 15 of those things for this week and hand them out. Go hand them out. Go invite people all over the place. Let's pack this place out. Let's get to where all three services are so packed out we don't even have enough chairs for anybody. Why? So you can brag? No, man, forget that. Because I want people to hear about the true Savior of the universe and His birthday and what it means for their lives and how it changes everything. And church, I, I, I don't know about you. I'm just crazy enough to go, hey, we're going to change the world in this place. 
We're going to change the world. In little old 2,500 member town, Elgin, South Carolina, little old Kershaw County, South Carolina, where the big church plants won't come because they're scared. We're going to say God's going to move and God's going to do something miraculous in this house. If you believe that, would you stand to your feet with me today? Father, we honor you and we give it all to you. This is your church. We are your kids. And God, we will follow you to the ends of the earth. We will not stop until Jesus runs this county. We will not stop until Jesus runs this county this town. God, I pray that the vision that you've laid out today would sit in our hearts and we go out and execute. God, we love you. We worship you. We will grab our invites. We will pray. We will invite and we will trust you as we see miraculous things happen. We declare we're willing to do the ridiculous to see the miraculous. God, we love you and trust you. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey church, let's go change the world. I'll see you next week.